Hey everyone, Elijah here, back with another video. Today we're looking at the achievement diaries, which ones are worth your time, and which ones are useless. Because I think you might be surprised, some diaries look far better than they really are. If you can guess what's an S tier before watching the video, I'd be surprised. Leave a comment if you think you got it. Thanks everyone so much for supporting my videos. If there's something you find interesting in this video, please leave a like and comment. Consider subscribing, as 90% of my viewers are not subscribed. So I'm going to break down each tier at a time, starting with easy. I'll be ranking them in my opinion on the rewards versus star requirements and time to unlock them. So obviously this is my opinion, but I'll do my best to be fair. As you've probably noticed from the length of this video, it's quite a bit longer than my other videos. I wanted to do my best to cover good information, but this was certainly a different sort of challenge to edit this video and turn it around in a week. If you like it and like more long form content, let me know and I might do another one in the future. And by the way, I will announce the winners of last week's giveaway at the end of this video. Okay, so let's kick it off with the RD tier 1. So the only skill requirement here is 5 thieving and only has 2 quests and both of them are super easy. And for the rewards, you get unlimited teleports to the RD monastery. Uh, your lamp and double death runes from cats, which is somewhat useful for Iron Man. Uh, and you get some noted drops of the Tower of Life. Again, realistically only useful for Iron Man. But the unlimited teleports to the Arty Monastery is huge. That is free prayer every single time you teleport without restriction. And it's also a pretty close teleport to a fairy ring. Really powerful on a new account. And the Arty Cloak also has the best in slot stab bonus for the cape slot. So it's actually best in slot for stab and it's going to be what you're using until you get a fire cape. So for the incredibly low requirements and crazy power on it, it has to go into S tier. That's just insane. All right, let's move on to the Desert Diary. So we have some small quests, 21 Thieving and 5 Hunter. Uh, however, this diary is useless. Uh, the Fire Receptor holding extra charges means nothing, goats dropping noted haunt, who cares, uh, buying noted artifacts, again, useless. Um, basically, the only reason you're ever doing this is to get the XP lamp, um, which again, I wouldn't go super out of your way to unlock. Doing stuff in the desert is a bit annoying. Uh, it's 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 detail. It's it's definitely not worth it. Okay, Falador easy. Uh, so a couple of stat requirements, although pretty much completing the quest, Dorix quest and Knight Sword almost completes all the stat requirements for this diary, so that's pretty effortless. Um, the 25% prayer restore once per day sounds like it would be really good, um, but that's less than a prayer potion uh, in every single situation, and it's also one of those things where because it's such a small amount and you will often forget to even take it out of your bank to use it, it's almost never going to get used. <clears throat> you think about how good the Arty Cloak is, because the Arty Cloak gives you infinite prayer all the time at the click of a button, whereas this only gives you 25% prayer once a day. Uh, it does give you the shortcut, which used to be a decent moneymaker before it got bothered to get the Zami Wines, but again, pretty much irrelevant nowadays, so... It's it's slightly more useful than the desert necklace, which is literally useless. So I'll I'll, I'll pop it in C tier for now. Okay, Fremi easy diary. This one actually for an easy diary has quite a lot more requirements. So um, I'll put the requirements on the screen here, um, and you also need to complete Fremnic trials, which for a brand new starting account is not an easy quest to get into. There's quite a few other requirements and stats you need to get before you get there. So it's probably one of the harder easy diaries to get into um the rewards for that are not great uh one teleport to relica every day seems relatively decent um it's not too bad you can just teleport to the dks fairy ring and run west now that they've added that agility shortcut into the east side of relica uh, peer this year acting as a bank deposit box is literally useless so that will never be relevant ever and the Enchanted Lyre Extra Charge, again, is basically useless. Um, there's a much easier way to get to Relica uh, later on when you unlock Lunar Isle, because you can just talk to any NPC there without the amulet equipped, and they'll just kick you off straight into Relica anyway. Um, like I said, or you can use the DKS Berry Ring. Um, the one free teleport is useful, especially in the rare times you have to get there, but it's 
not really worth the amount of work you have to put in, so I'd probably put it C tier. It has some use. It's more useful than the Desert Amulet, but it's it's got quite a bit of stats and quests behind it. All right, Kandera and Easy Diary. Um, not too crazy stats here. Uh, 20 agility is a bit annoying. Um, the 13th farmer you can easily get from knocking out two quests. Um, for an Iron Man, this is quite annoying because you need to complete uh, Skippy and the Mogas uh, with uh, 32 Slayer. Um, so quite a bit more of a pain compared to a, a main account. Um, the Kander and One Headgear functioning as a light source is somewhat useful for a handful of quests or places where your light source can be extinguished. Having an indistinguishable light source is really good. Um, getting the next extra logs from double trees is again completely pointless. Um, some u moderately useful Iron Man things. I never used any of this on my Iron Man, but the coal trucks can hold extra coal, and the flax keeper will give you th uh, thirty bowstrings for a noted flax once a day. It's often going to be one of those things where you don't want to turn the game into daily scape, though. So running around and doing all this, uh, getting your extra bowstrings and stuff like that is probably not going to be something you want to put on your to-do list. You'll probably have more fun doing other things. Um, I think it's, it's moderately useful. I think probably joining joining the rest in, in C tier at the moment. It's it's not bad, but it's not amazing. Um, the 5% more marks of grace is like a nice benefit, but if you're going to hard grind graceful, you've probably already got graceful from the Canifers course, so getting more marks on Sears Village doesn't really matter, again, unless you're an Iron Man. If you're an Iron Man, these benefits are kind of useful, you're getting more marks of grace for your stamina potions. If you're a main, you're maybe getting slightly more marks towards a graceful recolor, um, but 5% marks of grace isn't really going to matter that much ex unless you're on a massive time scale. At which point you're going to get more marks of grace from the further tiers of the diary. So this 5% on its own doesn't really mean all that much. Alright. Karamja Easy Diary. Um, this one has a pretty big stat requirement. It has no quests, um, but you need 40 mining, 15 agility. 40 mining is going to take you a bit. There's not really a lot of quests you can do that can boost your mining up straight to 40. You're probably going to, have to do some actual manual mining here unlike most of the other easy diaries where you can just do a couple quests and get this unlock for free um however the karamja gloves one if you're an iron man is probably one of the best upgrades you can get because this is the thing that lets you buy your uncut onyx and craft your amulet of fury um this used to be the most bonkers diary reward in existence so way way back even i think pre-zora correct me if i'm wrong um, selling stuff to shops on Karamja could make you about 10 mil GP per hour, and the best money makers at the time were like 2.53 mil per hour. Like this, and this was from an easy diary, like way, way back. So this was bonkers crazy. You could make an alt account, quickly get Karamja gloves, tier one, and then just go have an alt account make you like 10 mil on the side while you played your main account. It, it, it was ludicrous. Like this would have been like S plus 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 tier back then. Um, however, for a main now, uh, the extra deals in the Kramja don't really matter. You're never really selling things here. You're not really using training sticks. Um, it's, it's not really that amazing. And your, uh, XP lamp is kind of worse. It's only a 1k XP lamp, but you can use it on any skill. It doesn't have to be level 13 above like the rest of the easy diaries. There's also the boat trip discount from Musa Point Port Serum, um, which cost uh, 15 coins instead of 30, which sounds like it would be moderately useful, but you would have to make this trip uh, 667 times for it to save you even 10,000 coins. So because of that, I'm going to put it like, let's say bottom of C tier, like this is this is worse than the rest of these, but not as bad as a desert amulet. Um, actually, no, I changed that. We'll put it at the top of D tier. Um, it's, it, the stat requirement's too high for the 1k XP lamp, like, realistically. It's it's just it's just too slow. All right, Karendon Kerberos Diary. This is a diary that's got decent requirements on it. Uh, 15 mining, 12 herb lore, 25 thieving, 20 fishing, and 25 construction. But you get good rewards for those requirements. Unlike the uh, Karamja Diary, the Karen Diary rewards are actually big savings um so you get three teleports to the Karan woodland every day this is really good can get you to the chin chomper, chin chomper hunter spot can get you to the woodcutting guild can get you to 
uh, a charter location, uh, all of the single teleport. Um, the extra 2% chance of fish, who cares, unless you're an Iron Man and you're AFK fishing sharks or something. Um, having halved access to Crab Cut Isle is huge. This is the gold saving the Dire Reward should offer. This takes the Crab Cut Island cost from 10k down to 5k. So it's saving you 5k each run. Like one run, like two runs of this is better than nearly 700 runs of the previous ships uh, from the Corruptor Diary. This, this is a gold discount worth getting. Uh, it also reduces the tanning price uh, from Eden in the Forthos dungeon from 100% to 80%. Eh, if you're an Iron Man or maybe, I don't, I don't even think Iron Man would do this honestly, <laughs> probably irrelevant. Um, the double drop rate of the Xerix Talisman, that is really good. Every account, regardless of what progression or what you're doing, will absolutely need a Xerix Talisman. Karend is massive, and you will want a quick way to get around before you can, and you get the Keras Memoir. Um, so doubling the drop rate of the Talisman is huge. This this thing is S tier. I honestly, ooh, is it better than Infinite Prayer and the Fairy Ring access? I'll put it I'll put it second. Um, and the reason I'm doing for that is because the stat requirements are a lot higher than the Adi Diary. The Adi Diary literally just needed five thieving and two quests. Um, that was it. Whereas the Karen Diary, you need 15% Hasidious Favor, Druidic Ritual, and a bunch more stats. Um, so the barrier to entry is a little bit higher, but still an incredibly good diary. Absolutely pick this one up. The Lumbridge Easy Diary. Quite a few stat requirements on this one, um, a lot more than I would have expected, honestly. Um, you get 30 casts of low alchemy per day without runes, which is frankly completely irrelevant, like does nothing. Um, you would much rather just cast high alchemy, like, I know, I know you're an early account, but in the time it takes you to get the stats here, you can probably get 50 magic, or you could just save up your alchemals if you're an Iron Man until you get 55 magic, um, which is going to be way better. Um, the 30 cost of low alk as a main is going to just lose you money every time. Like if you buy stuff off the GE and use the 30 cost of this, you're just going to lose money and any other items you could just sell to the GE instead of low alking and make more money than low alking anyway. The 50% run energy regen sounds like it would be really good. Um, but because it's 50% twice a day, you think about how quickly you can use a hundred run energy and this thing restores it once every 24 hours, a hundred run energy. It's... It's so rarely useful that you'll probably even forget that you have the ring to use the charges on it. It's it's pretty much irrelevant. Like, a main can sip a single stam dose and make this thing completely useless. So, uh, you're pretty much just doing this for the XP lamp, and that's about it. Um, which pretty much puts it in with desert tier. I'll say that until you get like a ring of wealth or like a semi good ring you can just leave the explorers ring one equipped and if you remember to use the run energy you can restore some but like that's a, that's pretty niche that's it's not really that good okay moving on to the martini diary this one has some pretty easy requirements again you can just bang this all out from quests unless you're an iron man and you need 47 farming which is a pain to get i remember doing this on my iron man when i first started and it sucked i would it, it, it's going to take a bit longer. Uh, the rewards for this are not that great. Um, you get two daily teleports to the slime pit beneath the Ectofunctors, which is basically only useful to exactly hardcore Iron Man because the only people who should be using the Ectofunctors are hardcore Iron Man. Any normal Iron Man should absolutely be using the Wilderness Altar still or just killing Lava Dragons and burying the bones on Lava Dragon Isle. If you didn't know, if you bury Lava Dragon Bones on Lava Dragon Isle, it gives like four times XP. Um, so it's better than just going to the altar anyway like it you, you don't use active functions it's not good um 50 chance of ghast ignoring you rather than attacking again basically you're only good for iron man getting more my fungus um and 2 2.5 slayer xp in the slayer tower while on a slayer task sounds like it would be good it, do, it does sound good but the problem is that pretty much everything in the slayer tower you're never actually going to be killing that like every task is uh, pretty much useless. Um, you're only really going to do gargoyles here. Um, Blood Vels, you can do them in Neve's Cave, or you can barrage them in the current catacombs, or you can do them in the 
laboratories with a cannon, which is better. Uh, Necreals, you can barrage them in the catacombs, which is better. Abyssal Demons, you can barrage them in the catacombs, which is better. Don't ever do Crawling Hands and Banshees, unless you're super early and don't do Infernal Mages. Aber Inspectors, you can do in the catacombs. And that that's it. That literally all the monsters I've just described, you don't ever actually kill here, so the extra bonus doesn't really matter. The only monster that you will kill here is Gargoyles, so if you do a lot of Gargoyles later down the track, that might be useful. But again, this is the easy diary. This, this is... You're not killing gargoyles when you're when you're at easy diary. Gargoyles require seventy five Slayer, so uh, it's not good. It's it's really not good. So and and the requirements are decently high. Um, teleports don't do anything. So yeah, I I'm gonna I, I'll mm, yeah no, it's worse than the ring. It's it's worse than the <laughs> release. The ring gives you some run energy sometimes. This is, this is definitely worse than the ring. All right, Varrock Diary. Uh, the stats here are not too bad. The worst part is like 20 fishing. Uh, 50 kudos will be annoying on a brand new account. Uh, if you look up kudos on the OSRS wiki, you can see a list of quests that give you kudos and you can probably pick it up a little bit more quickly. Um, this one is not too bad. 10% uh, chance of mining ores up to and including gold. That's really good because if you're doing drop mining iron, this will count. So if you're doing early mining levels, drop mining iron, um, you get XP for both. So unlike the other rewards, like the current giving you a chance at extra fish, you actually get the XP from both. So this is this is a really good upgrade. This is 10% basically, 10% uh, upgrade to your mining XP, which is really nice. Um, and then you also get 10% chance of smelting two bars from two ores simultaneously up to steel. Not really relevant for mains, definitely very nice for Iron Man if you're doing any of your own smelting instead of getting bars as drops. Uh, Zaf will sell you 15 battle staffs a day. Uh, this is really good because he sells them for 7k and then you can just immediately turn around and sell them on the GE for uh, 8k or 8.3k. So you can make a couple of G couple k every day just by clicking buy sell, which is pretty strong. Especially for a new account when you're looking for some easy ways to gain gold. The Skull Scepter gaining 14 charges is pretty relevant. There's not really that many good teleports, especially in the early game, towards Barbarian Village. Uh, especially this is also used as a teleport for Clue Scrolls. Um, so there's a, overall a bunch of really decently good stuff here. Um, is it as good as these two? Infinite Prayer. I'll put it in A tier. I think... These two are still just way too strong compared to to this. Like this does have some good benefits, but the you're basically only making 15k off the battle staffs, so and then once you take the GE tax out of that, it's probably a bit less. Um, it's not really that amazing. Um, but honestly, the Varrock Armor one, the best part about it is that you get closer to Varrock Armor two, and we'll get to that. But Varrock Armor two is very good. Okay, Western Provinces Diary. 30 range, 20 fletching. 20 fletching is definitely a pain. Early fletching levels suck um, for both mains and iron men. Uh, 15 mining, which you basically just get from Doric's class. Uh, not too bad. Um, the 30 chompy kills is also annoying. The chompy kills for every tier of this diary are terrible. I don't know why we have to do this, um, but there you go. So as rewards, we get 25% chance of two chompy chicks spawning, which is again is only useful to get further tiers of the diary so it's kind of whatever to be honest it's like the only time you're ever going to do it is to get the pet or get the diary completion that, that, sure uh and 20 free ochre arrows which if you're actually insane enough to go and claim these every day from rants like holy you've got dedication i've never seen like the, that's got to be worth like 40 gp or something like don't don't do that please do something else with your time uh yeah this is uh this is definitely dtr it, it's 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 on par with the desert amulet they both do nothing they're both useless they just you're just doing xp lamp that that's it that's the only reason you're here <laughs> wilderness diary uh wilderness diary has pretty low requirements only one baby quest enter the abyss uh 15 mining 20 agility 21 magic uh, but the rewards are the Wilderness Sword one will always slash any webs, uh, the Leather can teleport you between Edgeville and Adi, and the 40 free random rooms from Lundale. Uh, now the Wilderness Sword one, always slash web successfully, sounds useful, especially if you have the annoying thing of the web not slashing successfully, 
Um, but the thing to note is that Jagex, I can't remember when, but they changed the way that web slashing calculation works. It now works as a number percentage based on the slash accuracy of the weapon you're currently wielding. So if you're wielding a D-SIM, you have a 67% chance of success because the thing has 67 slash. So in most cases, the Wilderness Sword one is actually just saving you mostly a single click, because if you click a second time with any weapon over 50 slash, you're statistically likely to slash the web. So if that sounds useful to you, if you'd rather just have the 100% chance, that's fine. It does take up an inventory slot, which could be a piece of food in the Wilderness, which might save your life, so keep that in mind as well. Um, they teleport to either Edgeville or Artie is very useful, especially for Iron Man. There's no good way to get to Artie early on. So banking everything and just quickly will be levering your way from Edgeville to Artie is a really fast way to get there. Um, you're not going to use it a ton, but it is definitely more useful than, you know, Desert Diary or Western Provinces. 43 random runes from Lindo. This is on par with the free arrows from rants like don't go and collect these you're more than likely going to get 40 free elemental runes that suck the likelihood that you get good runes is pretty low uh other than c tier it's definitely low c tier um but it's not bad it's it could be much worse <laughs> if you look how many things are in d tier right now okay let's move on to medium tier all right, stepping up to the medium, you can see the requirements here are a lot higher than, than easy. Like we're talking going from things that are like five in a single skill to like 30s to 50s in multiple skills uh, in order to get to mediums, as well as a decent chunk of quests done. So there's quite a lot, quite a big step up here, especially if you're an Iron Man, like some of these requirements will just mess you up. Like you need 59 fletching for the medium diary compared to mains, which is just brutal. Um, the rewards for the medium diary, uh, so all the medium barrels will give you 7,500 XP in any skill above 40, which is not too bad. Um, the tier one uh, diary reward is probably better relative to the medium diary in terms of like your total account XP. Um, you get 100 free pure essence, which is useless for everyone, including Iron Man. Um, you get more noted drops of Tower of Life, which is only good for some stuff with Iron Man. You get 10% increased chance of pickpocket and arty, which is good if you want to do arty knights, but basically useless for everything else because it doesn't apply to everywhere else. Also, you don't need to be wearing the cloak. I remember making this mistake when I was a noob. I would always wear the arty cloak when I was pickpocketing. Don't actually need to. Uh, the ring of life teleport to arty is irrelevant. Uh, additional runes when crafting essence at the Arania altar is slightly useful. Um, but the, honestly, the biggest thing on is the three daily teleports to the RD farm patch, which is useful-ish for farm runs, herb runs specifically. It doesn't get you a tree patch, so it's not super amazing. You do get 56 coin pouches, which is good for RD knights if you really want to do that. Otherwise, not the most amazing rewards. So overall, you still get to keep the teleports from before, but the requirements in this are really high. So unless you really, really want to do pickpocketing RD knights, there's honestly not too much to gain on here. Uh, so because of that, it's quite niche, and honestly, the best rewards are on the easy diary. So we'll put it in C tier. With that, the desert diary. The medium desert diary has a lot of requirements, and all of them between 30 and 50. There's a ton of different quests you have to do. It, it, there's a lot to unlock the desert diary, and your reward for doing all this work is one teleport to Nada per day. Garbage. Terrible. Don't do it. Desert sucks, and that, that that's so much work for for basically another XP lamp. Like the the these are t it's terrible. <laughs> Don't do these. Alador medium diary. Uh, so again, a lot of stats, a lot of stats between forty and fifty. If you're an Iron Man, again, you kind of get shafted here. You need fifty nine fletching and forty smithing, or uh, forty seven smithing. Sorry. Uh, so again, big requirements, and you have to do partial completion of rat catches. Uh, not good. Anyway, the rewards, 50% prayer restore once per day. Oh boy, you get like 1.5 doses of prayer potion. Uh, yeah, not great. Uh, you get 10% more XP from the Faldor farming patch. This is this is okay. This is, this is pretty good, especially if you do your tree runs. You can always plant your tree here and get 10% more XP. Not, not too bad, especially with trees being so good in the early game. If you want to get some good farming gains, yeah, it's not bad. 
Um, the access to the shortcut in the Motherload Mine would be good, but the Motherload Mine shortcut requires 54 agility anyway, which is way higher requirement than anything on this uh, diary, so you're going to have to do even more work. And the higher chance of re receiving a medium clue from a Garden Falador, th this, this is pointless. No, people stopped killing guards for clue scrolls in like 2000 and probably before 2007. Um, it, this isn't good, don't... The, 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 uh, <laughs> not great. Uh, so basically, slightly good for farm runs, which pretty much earns it a spot slightly above the tier 1 shield. Um, you're still going to do quite a lot of effort to unlock it, so not amazing. Fremi Diary. So the Fremi Easy, remember, had some of the biggest sort of requirements early on to get in. Uh, for the Medium Diary, the requirements are about the same as the other Medium Diaries, the biggest thing on here being 47 the Slayer and 50 Smithing. Um, which can be a pain, especially in the early stages of the game, especially on an Iron Man 50 smithing can be a bit of a difficult one. Um, the quest requirements, really, really easy, so that's always good. Um, the rewards are the shortcut between the miscellaneous dock and etc, which you will use exactly never because you're never going back there once you complete that quest, and a 10% chance of gaining approval and managing miscellaneous, which is... Uh, Good if you do that and you're an Iron Man. If you're a main, you can do that for profit, um, but you need a bunch of starting capital to work with it anyway. And if you want to make more profit for your time, I'd highly recommend checking out my money making guys. There's a lot better early game money makers than you'd expect. But if you want the passive thing chipping in the background, eh, it's not too bad. Um, I don't know if it's worth enough to grind out this many requirements, especially because some of the stats on here can take a bit of time to get to. But if your account's naturally progressing to this point, not bad to pick it up. I wouldn't hard chase it though. I, I'll put it, put it slightly below the Falador shield. Kandarin tier two, the medium Kandarin diary. This one has some pretty big requirements. 47 thieving, 59 fletching again for Iron Man. You just keep getting the mithril grapple check, which requires super high fletching, um, which is brutal. 46 fishing again that's a bit of a bigger one for a medium diary um the quests very very easy next to nothing you'll have these quests completed don't worry about that uh, as for our rewards you get 33 percent faster spinning flax how good no one spins flax that is useless 10 percent more experience when cutting maple trees if you want to afk maples in the mid game this is good i would recommend trying to get up to yew trees and afk there because then you can afk use all the way up to redwoods uh, AFK maple trees, not the best thing ever. Coal trucks holding a bit more, you're never using these. Flax keeper exchanging a bit more, you're never using these. 10% more marks of grace. Like I said before, with the 5%, it's it's nice. It's it's a nice chance, but it's not really going to do all that much for the account. It's not like you're unlocking a huge money maker or something. And you get a 5% chance to save a harvest at the Catherby Herb Patch. Again, a nice to have, but if you use an Ultra Compost, that's going to have you know, a hundred times the effect of this, so it doesn't really do all that much. Uh, basically, the tier one headgear is probably way better for more... <clears throat> basically, the tier one headgear is probably way better for less effort. None of the rewards here are basically useful at all, um, and you already get the infinite light source from the first one. Uh, and based on how high the stat requirements are, I'm, I'm going to have to put this one in D tier. Now, uh, I think it's probably worse than the ring. Oh, is it worse than the ring? Ooh, no, the 10% marks is probably better. Actually, 10% marks is maybe better than the gloves. Yeah, we'll put it top of D tier. Karamja Medium Diary. 65 fishing, 50 woodcutting, 41 hunter. That's pretty brutal stats for a medium diary. That's that's quite a lot, and that's a big amount of grinding you got to do. Um, the quests are easy. The 100% tie by one I clean up favor is the worst requirement in the world. This is awful. Th this mini game sucks. If you get lucky, you'll have to get you'll get a gout tuba, but otherwise, this is this is the worst. It's terrible. I don't know why this is on the medium diary. You get 10% more agility XP from all obstacles in the Broomhaven agility arena, and you get increased experience gains when redeeming agility tickets. If you're doing the Broomhaven agility arena. I mean, all power to you, but you're insane. Um, that place sucks. You also get a worse lamp than the rest of the skills. You only get 5k XP from the medium. And you get access to a stepping stone shortcut that requires 77 agility. You're never going to use that. No one has ever used that. That's the worst shortcut in the game. 
this is really bad. This is, it's it's worse. It's worse than the desert amulets. The stat requirements are huge and the reward is garbage. Current and Kobo's medium. All right, 49 agility is a hefty one. Uh, 50 fire making, 50 wood cutting, 45 f farming, 53 hunter, and 40 plus mining and fishing. That's a lot. Plus you also have to do all of the starter quests for all of the different houses, and you have to get Shazy in favor, Arceus favor, and Hesidia's favor. Uh, Arceus is very fast, Shazy is fast but super tedious, and Hesidia's is, again, fast but tedious. It, it, these suck. I mean, no one likes getting favor. They're just not good. Um, for the rewards, you get five teleports to the current woodland, so only two more than before. You get a four percent chance at two fish, which means nothing. You get the plus one prayer bonus given by the blessing. So this makes the blessing as good as any of the other god blessings, like the war blessing or the Zamorak blessing or anything like that, um, which is good because it makes it second best in slot only behind the current elite diary blessing. You get free access to Cla Crab Claw Isle, which keep in mind is the same amount of benefit as the Easy Diary, because the first one took it from 10, the cost from 10k to 5k, this is taking from 5k to zero. So realistically, this is the same amount of benefit with way more stat requirements slapped on top. You get a 5% chance to mine two dense essence blocks at once. That's pretty good. Uh, you get 20 free dynamite from it, who cares? And you get reduced handing prices again. Nah, you're not using that. Uh, so th th it's not bad. You get the second best in slot prayer bonus in the range slot, assuming you don't need to equip ammo. Uh, you get the antique lamp, which is not bad. You get the crab claw aisle, which is really good because it means you can not deal with the bots and go straight to the crab claw aisle and leave and come and go whenever you please without having to spend any money. Um, and you get better mining for rune crafting. But keep in mind that in order to take advantage of that rune crafting, you need to be 77 rune crafting to make blood runes which is really high requirement to gain from this uh medium diary but it is a good reward it it, it does it does help um so we'll say it, it's not amazing the stat requirements are pretty big um but we'll we'll put this in b tier lumbridge and draenor so the lumbridge requirements are actually pretty low again unless you're an iron man and you just have to pay the mythical grapple tax um, but otherwise this is a very easy diary to get. Compared to the actual easy diary, it's it's not bad. Uh, a lot easier to do. Um, as a reward, you get 50% run energy replenished three times a day. So you get one more replenishment than the easy diary. You get three daily teleports to the cabbage patch near Falador Farm, which is good if you do herb runs. Um, that's the only thing it's good for. Um, the access to the Draenor Village wall shortcut, which sounds really good, but I'm pretty sure Soup did a video on this, and it actually ends up being about the same speed as just running around the wall anyway. Uh, it's I don't think I've ever used this shortcut. It's, it's not good. Um, so basically, if you like doing herb runs, this is a slight quality of life gain for doing herb runs, so I'll put it middle of C tier, but not great. It, 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 the only thing that's going for it well here is that the requirements are pretty low for a medium diary, so that's, that's good. Medium Mauritania. We're looking at 50s and quite a lot of annoying stats. 45 woodcutting, 50 fishing, 50 smithing, 42 agility, 42 slayer. That's a lot, and you have to do a fair chunk of quests, along with the lair of Tarn Razalor, which is annoying to do. It's a very irritating place to be. Um, and for all your efforts, you get five daily teleports to the slime pit, which is, again, useless. It acts as a ghost amulet when worn. Okay. Robin offers 13 buckets of slime and 13 pots of bone meal in a day in exchange for bones. This is technically good, and again, if you're a hardcore I meant, this is great. You can just bang out prayer every morning when you log in and just slowly chip it away at it. Um, for mains, you're probably never using this, just take the 13 bones to the wilderness altar, you get more effectiveness out of it anyway. 5% um, more slayer XP in the slayer tower, as we discussed before, this is completely useless, you never kill anything in here on slayer task anyway except gargoyles, at which point you probably still don't have gargoyles unlocked because the slayer requirement here was 42, gargoyles 75, so this is still useless, um, and the stat requirements are pretty massive, uh, this is definitely not worth it. Um, is everything, everything here is kind of useless. Is it useless enough to be lower than the Desert Amulet? No, it can't be lower than the Desert Amulet. Those things are terrible. Okay. It's going just above the Desert. Actually, no, I've got to go above the Western Provinces Diary. It can sit right next to the other one. 
Uh, the other one stays higher because the requirements are lower and you get the XP lamp a bit faster. The requirements on this are much higher and you get nothing. Varrock Medium Diary. Uh, the requirements on this, very, very easy. There's basic, the, the only requirement above 40 is fire making. All the quests are very easy. You have to set up a RuneScape Authenticator, which you absolutely should have set up. If you haven't got that set up, go do it right now. You do not want to get hacked and lose your account. You'll get access to the dig site pendant as well with the level three enchant, the ruby necklace. You'll probably be doing the kudos grinding. Honestly, it's a very easy diary. It gives you double mining chance or it's up to mithril. This isn't really that relevant. You only really want to get the double mining iron or double mining the granite if you're doing four tick granite. Um, any other mining, you're going to be AFKing if you're doing mother load mine or shooting stars. It won't benefit from either of those, so it doesn't really matter. Zaf selling 30 battle stops, great. You're now making about 30k a day instead, pretty good. The best thing on here though, the Varok teleport can be changed to the Grand Exchange destination by either right clicking on the icon or the tablet, depending on whatever you use. This is insane. This is the closest bank teleport in the game, except the crafting cape teleport. And the crafting cape teleport requires 99 crafting. This is like, I think one or two tiles further away and you get it from this diary. This is insane. Even if you're an Iron Man, get this because it's it's a crazy teleport and you don't need to use Rings of Dueling for charges. This is super good. Uh, this this diary, it, ooh. Nah, it's S tier. The, re the requirements are so low that you get such a good teleport and you get free money making on the daily. It, it's good. It's really good. Western Province Diary. Again, with high stat requirements, Western Province Diary. We've got 40 mining, 46 fishing, 42 cooking, rest below 40s. So not the highest of any of the medium diaries, um, but the rewards, again, they just don't stack up. You get 50% chance at two chompies which is again, only good for grinding this diary and nothing else. You get the Crystal Soul holding twice as many charges. I don't think anyone's ever used Crystal Soul to actually train construction because it would run out of charges too quickly. So you're only ever using the Crystal Soul for boosts, which means it doesn't really matter how many charges it has, as long as it can just make the one thing that you're boosting to craft. Uh, and 50 free Oak Arrows from Rance is terrible and no one should be collecting those. So this is just going to go right next to the easy diary. It's uh, it's bad. Don't. It's not good. Moving on to Wilderness Medium Diary. So Wilderness suffers from this problem, and you'll see this at the higher tiers as well, where it just has bonkers high stat requirements for some reason. So it's got 55 Mining, 50 Smithing, 52 Agility, 60 Magic, 50 Slayer, and 61 Woodcutting. That everything's over 50 with two 60s. Compare that to the Varrock Medium Diary that had fire making as the only 40 and everything else below that. But the Wilderness Diary has multiple 50s and two 60s. It's insane. I don't know why the Wilderness Diary has such ludicrously high stat requirements, but it does. So, for all the extra work you put in to grind your stats up way higher than all the other Medium Diaries, you get increased chance of successful yield from Ents by 15%. This is a Decent mid to low level money maker, but nothing crazy powerful. You get 20% off entry to the resource arena. This is good if you're trying to escape PKs or you're doing dark crabs, but basically useless otherwise. You can have four ecumenical keys at a time. This is okay, but since they changed the drop rate of ecumenical keys, this diary reward became a lot worse because this used to mean you could have four and the rate that they dropped from mobs in the God Wars uh, Wilderness Dungeon was better, but now they all drop at the same rate regardless of diary tier. So this doesn't really do anything. You get 80 free random runes a day. Again, this is not worth claiming. You're more likely than not to get, 40 air, to get 80 air runes or 80 fire runes, and it's just not worth the trip. Uh, you can get access to a shortcut in the Deep Wilderness Dungeon with 46 agility. Uh, very few people are going to use this unless you're doing Wildy Slayer. Um, that's about it. Um, the greatest thing here, though, is you do get access to Spindle, Audio, and Calvarian, which are the single wave versions of the Wilderness bosses. Uh, that is really good. Um, unfortunately, you're probably not going to be ready to do those bosses yet if your account is looking at the base 50s base 60s which is maybe where your stats are with this um you're probably looking to get your stats a little bit higher before you go do the solo versions of those bosses uh they are really good though those bosses are still like five mil profit per hour all three of them so 
it's definitely worth getting access to them, but I don't think I would rush this unless you've got the melee combats to back it up. So for the fact that it gives you access to some really good bosses, I will put it in B tier, but the stat requirements are extraordinarily huge. They're way overtuned. I, I think Jaggers need to reconsider some of the wilderness requirements because it's just too much. All right, moving on to the hard diary, starting off with Artie. Uh, this one has a pretty big step up. We're looking at some pretty serious requirements here. You need to do Morning's End Part 2, a quest that a lot of people dislike. You need 72 thieving, which is huge. You need 70 farming, which is huge. Um, you need 68 smithing, 52 mining. Like, th there's some pretty big requirements. 65 runecrafting. Uh, yeah, your account's going to be pretty progressive if you're getting all of these stats at this point. And you'd hope with putting in that much work, you're going to get a really good reward. Uh, you get five daily teleports to the Artie farm patch. And again, if you're doing daily scape, you're probably only risking doing like one, maybe two herb runs a day if that's the thing that you're into. So it's pretty much useless to have five daily teleports unless you're doing your runs on the hour every hour. Uh, you get 50, 150 free noted pure essence, which is 150 GP, who cares? Uh, you get to toggle the watchtower teleport to the center of your nil. It, that is not worth grinding this amount of stats. You get 10% increased chance of succeeding when pickpocketing around Gilanor. So the thing that I'll say about this is this is actually really good specifically for Iron Man or people doing money-making thieving. If you're pickpocketing elves in Prithinus or you're pickpocketing Vyas in Darkmire, this is really good and you want this reward, absolutely. Um, but if you're doing either of those, you're probably 99 or close to 99 thieving anyway, because otherwise the money's not really that great. Uh, in which case, that's a pretty ludicrous reward to put behind this diary. So unless you're doing specifically those two money makers, or you want to really, really focus on doing pickpocketing RD knights, this is, this is pretty bad. It's... It's pretty. It's a lot of grinding. It's a lot of stats. I think we'll put it. We'll put it in C tier next to the next to the medium diary. Actually, no. This is the stat requirements are worse. Let's let's move it down a bit. We'll move it. We'll move it here. It's that's a lot. It's a lot of grinding. Okay, moving on to the desert hard diary. Desert hard diary. Seventy agility. Oh dear God. Sixty fire making. Not too bad. Sixty five thieving can take a while. Nearly seventy smithing. That is rough. Nearly seventy magic is a good stat. You want to grind, but it's a lot. Um, these stat requirements are probably a bit easier than the Arty Diary. Um, but again, the Desert Diary hasn't given us anything good in the tiers before. So what do we get here? You get access to a window shortcut in Alcarid Palace. This saves you very little time and requires seventy agility. You unlock the ability to toggle the Camulot Teleport, which you will never use. All carpet rides are free. They're only like 100 GP anyway. That they know, The price never mattered. Zahura will now create unfinished potions for 200 coins per, person, per potion um, from a vial of water and a clean herb. This can be done with noted items, which is notable. Um, he'll also clean herbs for 200 GP each. This is very good uh, if you're an Iron Man. If you're a main, this means nothing to you. Um, I will be putting this on the tier list from the perspective of a main, but I am keeping in mind that that is good. Um, and rows both placed at the Calphite Lair entrance and the Calphite Queen tunnels become permanent. This would be good if the Calphite Queen didn't suck. The Calphite Queen makes no money and is hard as hell to kill, which basically means it's only worth doing in absolute schmaximum gear and stats. Uh, so if you're going there to grind the pet, you obviously want this, but this is a terrible reward for, you know, a hard diary mid to end level account. Look, Desert Diary, just awful. <laughs> All three tiers, there's nothing here. It's all so, so hard and so bad. All right, Felidor Hard Diary. Uh, so you need 130 attack and strength combined, 65 in each, or 70 strength, 60 attack if you want to be efficient about it, because strength is always better. Uh, the rest of the stat requirements aren't too bad, except for the 72 Slayer and 71 Woodcutting. The 71 Woodcutting is tough, and you have to do the Grim Tales quest, which is where the requirement comes from. Um, and your reward for that is a 100% prayer restore once per day. This is the first time the shield becomes slightly good. Uh, and there's two reasons for that. One, 100% prayer restore is good. If you have 99 prayer, that's 99 prayer back. That's really good. Um, especially for a single slot. 
in your inventory, it's still technically worse than one super restore. But what is really good about this, and people are probably going to flame me, uh, in the Inferno, if you get yourself into a tricky situation and you're really low on prayer, for example, and you have two or three super restores left in your inventory and you're in the later waves, say, for example, you're about to go into triple jads, um, and you've already used a shield, you can log out, log in the next day, and then use the shield again to cheat yourself an extra 99 prayer points for the rest of your run. Uh, that may seem incredibly niche, but when you're doing your first Cape Inferno, honestly, take anything you can get. Uh, it's actually pretty good for that. Plus, it also lets you actually do Giant Mole, because it, it becomes the mole locator that shows the mole's location. Um, you get access to the bank chest and deposit box in the crafting guild, which is more or less useless unless you have 99 crafting, um, but can be good. And you get the giant moles skins and claws are noted, which is where most of the money comes from, so that's terrific. Um, these rewards are really quite good. I, I rate the Falador Shield 3. I I think the Falador, Falador Shield 2 and 1 are not great, but Falador Shield 3, it's um it's not the best reward ever, but it's it's pretty good. I put it in A tier. Not not as good as the Varrock medium armor, so it stays towards the bottom of A tier, but still really, really good. Remy medium diary. So this one's got some pretty big stats, uh, pretty annoying stats as well. You need 70 mining, 60 smithing, 66 herb lore, 75 thieving. Those are some annoying ones. Um, you've also got to do a fairly extensive amount of quests, Lunar Diplomacy and Fremi Isles. So you're putting in quite a lot to unlock this. So you're hoping for something good. You get the ability to change the Enchanted Liars teleport destination to Waterbirth Island. This would be slightly useful if you couldn't make a POH portal straight to Waterbirth Island because you had to complete Lunar Isle to unlock this diary, which means you have access to the Lunar Isle teleports, so this is basically completely useless. A, B, and C's in the God Wars dungeon drop adamant bars in noted form. Who on earth is farming Addy bars in the God Wars dungeon? If you're doing this as a moneymaker, please reconsider. Go have a look at my moneymaker video. There's plenty of better AFK options than this. Don't do this. You get a shortcut to the root of the stronghold of the troll stronghold, which requires 73 Slayer and completion of my arms big adventure. This is uh, very niche if you want to do exactly that herb spot on top of the troll stronghold. That's slightly useful, but otherwise not really relevant. The best thing you get out of here basically is tanned leather. This I mentioned in my OSRS money making video is actually quite useful. Um, the stat requirements are pretty big. Um, so I wouldn't rush to grind it. There's other money makers out there. So have a look at the video if there's other things that you would prefer to do. This one is good because it makes you magic XP at the same time. So if you're moving towards trying to get 99 magic and you want a profitable way to do it, this is a good option. Um, just keep in mind that in order to get access to this profitable version, you have to do a lot of not magic training in the form of thieving and mining and smithing. Um, so it is, it is good in that sense. Um, I think it's probably B tier. Now moving on to the Kandaran Hard Diary. There are big requirements here, there's no way around it. You've got 70 fletching, again, really tough for Iron Man, 60 wood cutting, 65 fire making, 70 fishing, and 75 smithing. 70 fishing, 75 smithing, don't understate these, they take a while, and 60 agility is also gonna take a while. There, There's a lot of skills that require a lot. You also need 70 prayer, which I know for some people can be a bit expensive. Prayer has dropped a lot in price though. I'd highly recommend getting dragon bones and going out to the wildy altar. I put that as a tip in one of my videos, so if you wanted to go do that, highly recommend it. And your rewards for doing this diary are you get one free teleport to Sherlock per day, uh, Thormac will enchant battle styles for a bit cheaper, which is irrelevant because you will never do that and it's not good money. Uh, coal trucks and hold a bit more. Again, you'll never use it. The Flax Keeper will exchange more. Again, you will never use this. 15% more marks of grace. Slightly more useful than the previous tiers. 10% chance to save life at the Catherby Herb Patch. Not too bad. 10% more reward points from Barbarian Assault. This is good because nobody likes doing barbarian assault very few people like doing barbarian assault i will say um and the 10 percent activation chance for the special effect from your bolts this is pretty good works out to about a five percent dps increase in places for example at next with an armored or crossbow you're doing about five percent more damage with the bolts toggled on uh so it is relatively good it's not bad um, but it is quite a lot of stats. Again, a recurring theme through the Hard Diaries. They are quite a lot of stats, and the rewards are not turbo amazing. 
Uh, I will say because of the bolt uh, increase, it's pretty good as well as just the, the quality of life gains from the harvest life save and the extra marks of grace do kind of reach a tipping point of it starting to be useful compared to the earlier tiers. And the one free teleport to Sherlock is actually really useful for you doing clue scrolls because you can get straight to your Sherlock steps and the likelihood you're doing more than one clue scroll a day if you work a full-time job uh, is probably pretty low. So again, B tier. Pretty good. Karamja Hard Diary. Stat requirements are actually pretty good here. This is not bad compared to the Elite Diary, which sucks. Um, so the stat requirements here, basically nothing over 60, nothing crazy. Um, rewards, you get unlimited teleports to the underground portion of the Shiloh Village Mine. This also doubles as a really good way to uh, get to Duradel for Duradel tasks. If you don't have the Elite Diary unlocked, this is quite good. Um, you get the discounted prices at the jungle store. So this is what I was talking about. This used to be on the easy diary, and this used to be even better than this. However, because of the way they've nerfed it, it's pretty much useless now. Um, when you buy and sell items at the jungle store, you pretty much just get alk price. Um, and you're probably better off alking anyway, both for the XP and... It's, I mean, don't alk al <laughs> at this point. If you've got these kind of stats, it's not really worth it. Again, you get a weaker experience reward than all the other diaries for some reason. I don't know why, but you do. Um, and you get access to the underground portion of the Shiloh Village Mine, which is a decent XP per hour method. So this is pretty good. Um, the stat requirements, not too bad. The rewards, also not too bad. Um, Karancha Gloves moving themselves up from D tier to B tier. Not, not, not too bad. Orend and Kebos Hard Diary. Again, like a fair few other diaries, this is where we see some big step up in stat requirements. 65 mining, 70 smithing, 74 farming being some of the big ones. The farming one, most people will also find quite annoying because farming is not really a skill you can grind on the spot once you realize that you're going to go for this diary. So you kind of have to commit to farming in the background to kind of catch up if you're behind. Um, far and away, the most annoying thing about this diary though is you need to 100% favor all five houses and 100%ing Lobacange and Port Piscarilius is terrible. Um, they still need to go and take a look at these. They suck. Um, as for your rewards, at least you are fairly rewarded. That is what I like most about the current uh, diary. The rewards usually are worth the payoff. Like, you can definitely tell it's the more modern diary of all the ones designed because the rewards are actually good. So we get unlimited teleports to the current woodland. This is, like I said, not too bad. We get three teleports to Mount Karom. This is great because if you want to teleport there for Konar tasks or you want to teleport there for an easy bank teleport, there's plenty of times where I've gone and done something completely forgotten to bring a teleport out and then realize that I have the blessing, can go straight to Mount Karom and instantly bank. Really good. The extra fish doesn't really matter. The Ash Sanctifier is sort of useful, but this and I'll get to it in a minute because it's on this tier as well. And the Bone Crusher, in my opinion, are huge noob traps. I remember hard grinding the Bone Crusher, and I absolutely would have hard grinded this to get the ashes from enemies to get prayer experience. They give you such small amounts of prayer experience. Like, we're talking in your 99 grand, you'll maybe get a couple hundred K prayer XP. That's less than an hour just doing actual prayer training in the wilderness and you're going to spend so much money charging it and doing it the entire time. It's not as good as you think. Really, it's not. Um, the Slayer Helm working as a Shazen in Helm 5 is really, really good if you're an Iron Man chasing the Dragon Warhammer drop. Um, if you're a main who enjoys doing Lizardman Shamans, this is really good for you as well. Um, I think this is really good quality of life change because you get to keep the Slayer boost while you're doing that. Um, you get a 5% chance to save Harvest Life at the Hisidious and Farming Patches. Eh, not really that relevant unless you really do her bronzes making money for your account. Um, but overall, pretty well rounded. The stat requirements are decently big, but the rewards also decently match that. So again, we're putting it in B tier. Uh, I'll say I'll put it next to, uh, I'll put it here in the middle of B tier. It's pretty good. Not too bad. Lumbridge Hard Diary. Lumbridge Hard Diary starts getting worse in terms of stat requirements. There's 59 rune crafting, 70 crafting, 70 cooking, a lot of 50s and 40s through here. The worst part, far and away, is that you have to do bones to peaches from the mage training arena, which is 
maybe the worst content in the game for, for many people. Some people enjoy it. Some people are psychopaths, but uh, it sucks. Um, and as your reward for that, you get 50% run energy restore four times a day. Oh my god. Um, one more than the previous tier. Please, why is this not four times 100% run energy? This is so not worth using. Especially at this point in your account, you're absolutely going to have better rings that do more useful stuff. Um, a single full four dose stamina potion completely dwarfs this entire uh, this entire run energy bonus. Uh, you get unlimited teleports to the cabbage patch near Falador Farm. Again, good if you do herb runs, but realistically you were never going over the cap before anyway. You get access to a shortcut from the Lumbridge Swamp to the Desert. Trust me, you will never, ever, ever, ever use this other than to get the diary. It's irrelevant. And you get 10% increased experience from Tears of Guthix. 10% increased experience from Tears of Guthix is good, um, but the rest of these rewards are terrible and useless. So it's it's going into D tier. It's not as bad as the Desert Amulet Diaries. I will give it that, but it can go sit next to their tier one ring. Mauritania Hard Diary. 71 agility, 70 prayer, 66 magic, and a bunch of 50s. And you have to do tricky quests, I suppose. Uh, it's a bit of a level up. And your reward for this is unlimited teleports to Birdorot, which sounds great until you remember that the Barrows teleport exists, which is about 10 extra tiles uh, for no requirements whatsoever. The Bone Crusher. I talked about this before with the Ash Sanctifier and the Kuran Diary, but the Bone Crusher is a massive noob trap. It gives you so little to no experience it's not worth using almost anywhere so many slayer tasks now are also demons so this has no use at necreals abyssal demons blood velds greater demons any boss task you'll never bring this uh roman gives you 26 free buckets of slime and 26 bone meal uh this is reasonably good again if you're a hardcore iron man otherwise you're never using this double malt my fungus when casting bloom Again, really good if you're an Iron Man, otherwise useless. 50% more prayer experience from Burning Shade Remains. This is actually better than it looks, but again, no one really does shades, and prayer is really just so much faster and easier if you just use Dragon Bones of the Wilderness. Would definitely recommend doing that. 50% more runes from the Barrier's Chest. This is pretty much why you would do this. 50% more runes from the Barrier's Chest does increase the profitability quite a bit. Um, but there are quite a lot of requirements to get to it. Like I mentioned before, 71 agility being a pretty big requirement. So I wouldn't feel rushed to go do this. If you want to do it for Barrows, you know, 100% go for it if you really enjoy Barrows. If you don't enjoy Barrows, give the diary a miss until you absolutely have to. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to put it into the bottom of C tier. Okay, moving on to the Varrock Hard Diary. Basically, the only requirements on here that are tricky are the 66 Hunter and 68 Farming. Farming is easy enough if you keep on top of your tree runs, but like I said in the previous diary, trying to rush farming once you realize you have the rest of the requirements always sucks. Getting the full 153 kudos can take a little bit, but it became a bit easier. Basically, there's nothing too crazy about this diary, um, and the rewards are not bad. Uh, chance of mining two ores up to adamant. Again, doesn't really matter too much for most mining training methods. Getting the 60 battle staffs a day is good. That's a free 60k per day you can make. Access to the Cook's Bank Guild used to be really good, but it's not really a great training place anymore. Uh, the Skull Scepter holding more charges is, again, just slight and nice quality of life. The stats aren't crazy. The quality of life isn't crazy. Uh, it's it's probably middle middle of C tier. It's, it's okay. Western Provinces Hard Diary. This one is a bit of a kick in the teeth. You need a swan song, you need to defeat Zolra, so if you haven't done Zolra before, that's got to be done. Uh, you also need 70 mining, which is going to take a while. You need 75 thieving, 70 range, 68 farming, uh, and some, uh, 62 fishing, 56 agility, 65 construction, and nearly 70 hunter. Uh, so this is quite a lot of stat requirements. It's going to take you quite a bit to get. The reward for this is getting the Western Banner 3, which is one daily teleport to the Piscatoris fishing colony, which is pretty much useless unless you want to fish monkfish, but monkfish have become kind of completely devalued after they added things like minnows and stuff like that for getting sharks. I think there's maybe a couple Iron Men who would find use in this, but otherwise they've kind of killed monkfish's content. 
Uh, you get the ability to upgrade your Void Knight outfit to Elite Void, which gives it a plus six prayer bonus as well as a slight damage boost to both mage and range. Uh, this is obviously really good. You use Elite Void at Tob. Um, you can also use Elite Void at Vorkarth. You could potentially use it at COX, although I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, void after the nerfs, because basically they nerfed Elite Void because it was better than Armadil in most cases. After the nerfs, Elite Void is always squishier than God Dehyde. And a lot of times, especially in, at lower range levels, like I'm talking unless you're above 90, it's usually lower DPS as well. So it's kind of not as good as you think. You get access to a locker room under the Apatol, which doesn't really do anything. Um, you get access to the private hunting area for Red Chin Chompers. This used to be a much bigger deal, but I was recording some footage for Red Chin Chompers the other day, and honestly, there's not that many bots at Red Chin Chompers anymore. I don't know if I just had a good run of not seeing any, or they're just not as good at doing it anymore, but yeah, I, I mean, I, this is nice to have, but honestly, I found the Red Chin Chompers private area pretty crowded when I was doing my 99 Hunter grind. You get 100 free Ogre, Ogre Arrows every day from Rand, so from 50, again, you're never claiming this, this is irrelevant. You get Teleport Crystals can hold up to 5 charges. A nice quality of life increase, this definitely means that you can only get a couple crystals and feel comfortable, rather than needing to grind like 20 or 30 to have your bank stocked up. Um, and you can also get the Crystal Halberd. This is a really good item, it's really good at core. Um, it's good as a spec weapon, especially for Iron Man or other accounts who don't have a crazy good spec weapon in the early stages. Um, especially with things like the Light Bearer, this becomes even better, and the Light Bearer is down at something crazy like 2 mil. So this is, this is pretty good if you have a good place to use it. The stat requirements are big, but not that much crazier than things from the other hard and medium diaries, uh, of which you're going to have a lot of these stats already. Um, so... We're going to put the first banner outside of D tier, uh, over to the bottom of B tier. It's, it's not bad. Wilderness Hard Diary. And here we are again, with stupid, stupid stat requirements. You need 75 smithing, 64 agility, 68 slayer, 67 hunter, and 53 fishing. Along with defeating the Chaos, F Elemental, Fanatic, and Crazy Archaeologist, and Scorpio. You need to have unlocked at least one of the three god spells, and completed Major Arena 1. Uh, and your reward for this is actually kind of worth it. Um, mainly because you get to choose the destination through the Ancient Obelisk. This is nice. You get access to the Lava Dragon Maze and Lava Dragon Isle shortcuts, but realistically, you probably shouldn't be killing Lava Dragons anymore. They're not really that worth your time. Plus, the requirements for these agility shortcuts is massive, 74 and 82 respectively. 50% um, more Lava Shards per scale. Pretty much only relevant to Iron Men, and you get the teleport delay in both the Revenant Caves and the Wilderness Boss Caves no longer apply to you. This is good. Um, I personally am very lazy in both of these places, so I usually get hit with the teleblock and just turn into a tank test anyway. Uh, but if you're on the ball, this is actually good. This is a, this is a nice change. Um, and compared to how brutal the Wilderness stat requirements were compared to previous tier, uh, this is not too bad. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll put this in B tier. Moving on to the final tier, Elite Tier Diaries. First we have the RD Diary, and the requirements here are, let's just say it, disgusting. 90 Agility, 91 Smithing, 81 Fishing, 82 Thieving, 91 Cooking, 70 Fletching, 85 Farming, and 94 Magic. Those are some insane requirements. This better be a cracked level reward. Oh wait, you get 25% more Marks of Grace from specifically the RD Rooftop course, and that's it. The unlimited teleports to the farming patch, as we talked about before, are basically useless. You get some buckets of sand worth next to no gold, and you get a couple more coin pouches. That is a ludicrous amount of grinding on an insane amount of different stats for basically no reward. The best thing you've got going is that the RD Cloak 4 is technically best in slot stab and best in slot prayer for cape, but... It, the only place it's really used is KBD. Like, any other place, you can just take a fire cape. It's only good if you're not risking anything. It's, 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 it's not, it's, it's, it's D tier. The, the stat requirements are way too high. This, this sucks. <laughs> this diary has way too much attached to it. Elite Desert Diary. Speaking of diaries that have really sucky requirements, you need 91 thieving, which is no short request. You need 85 cooking, which is going to take you a little bit. It's, it can be AFK. 85 prayer. For a lot of players, I think they'll camp 70 prayer or 74 so they can use rigor. So going from 74 to 85 is a bit of a gold investment. 
Uh, you also need 95 fletching, which will take a long, long time if you're doing it AFK, or give you carpal tunnel if you're doing it on dart tips, and you need 94 magic along with 78 construction, which is really good, but I will get to why that sucks in just a second. Because 78 construction, with the boosts up to 84 and the crystal saw, is enough for you to get a ornate pool POH with a bunch of other upgrades. And guess what? The best reward on here is that the Nada teleport takes you directly to the shrine. And that doesn't matter, because the shrine restoring your stats is irrelevant because you have a maxed POH with an ornate pool. Because you definitely have the gold to do it if you can get the prayer requirement, and you have the stats to do it if you can get the construction requirement. So this is... useless? Like, this would be really good, and it was really good before the POH had all the ornate pool and a bunch of other stuff in it. It was really good. But now this does nothing, and the requirements to get to it mean that you can already make it redundant. Uh, the extra 100 charges on the Fire Scepter don't really mean anything. The crevice shortcut for the Calphite Lair is good, but part of the annoyance of completing this diary is you need the stuffed KQ head, which takes up to and including 256 kill count for the tatted KQ head, or on average 1 and 128 for the normal Calphite Queen head, which means you have to kill a truckload of the Calphite Queen without getting this upgrade. So this upgrade is exclusively good if you're a maxed main with max gear grinding the pet. Otherwise, this is, is useless. Because of that, and the fact that the diary more or less makes itself redundant with its own requirements, I will put it in C tier, because it is technically required for the best in slot most efficient Calphite Queen grinding methods. But that is literally all this thing has going for it. Moving on to the Falador Elite Diary. Uh, you need to attain the White Knight Master rank, which means you have to kill a shitload of Black Knights. However, the stat requirements here are rough. 80 Agility, 81 Herb Lore, 75 Woodcutting, 91 Farming, and 88 Runecrafting. These are big requirements. There's, there's no two ways about it. Um, the reward is pretty good. The 100% Prayer Restore twice per day uh, is really good like I talked about for Inferno, like cheating more prayer in there. If you think you're running too low on prayer and you're at the later waves, like triple jads or just before triple jads, you can just use the prayer on this to restore to full. Um, it's also actually quite useful on triple jads because I remember in my first cape, uh, instead of having to worry about all the flicking back and forth and then drinking doses of super restore, I just had my rune light ping me to let me know that my prayer was below 10 and then all I did was quickly go back to my inventory, click the shield once and then I didn't have to worry about prayer until all the rest of the, until the other jazz were dead. Um, the tree patch never getting diseased is not really that great. You can just pay for protection considering how high the stat requirements are here to grind. Uh, you get the increased chance at higher level ores while, meaning, while cleaning pay dirt. However, it's only increased by about 1%, which is useless and nothing, and Motherload Mine is already a pretty sucky place to train mining. Um, it'll rot your brain. Um, you get access to Amethyst Mining, so if you want to have access to a very AFK money-making method, this is good. Um, I'd also recommend checking out my money-making video because you can get access to Vias, which in my opinion are about as AFK and better, um, much better money, so I would consider looking at that. Uh, Overall, the requirements are really high. It has some niche uses, so I will put it in C tier, but the stat requirements are rough. Okay, moving on to the Fremnik Elite Diary. So the Fremnik Elite Diary has some high requirements with 80 Agility, 80 Crafting, 83 Slayer, and 82 Room Crafting. But the rewards here are very good. Unlimited free teleports to Relica. This is the best way to teleport to Vorkarth. You also get Dagonoth Thrones dropped in noted form. More than half your profit at Dagnoth Kings just comes from the bones. This is great. Uh, you also get no longer requiring the Seal of Passage, which is, you know, on the few times you go there, you'll be really annoyed when you forget your Seal of Passage, so this is not too bad. You can also use the Return Orb inside the bank on Lunar Isle, which allows you to teleport to Relicar easily, although it's very easy to just teleport to your POH, restore your stats, and then use the Frampnik Sea Boots to teleport back to Relica and go straight to Vorkath. Overall, for an elite diary, stat requirements are actually not too bad, and the reward, very, very good. This, it's got, it's, it's S tier. It's S tier. The, the noted bones are crazy. It's, I wouldn't recommend doing Dagon Dagonoth Kings without this unlock. Moving on to the Kandoran elite diary. 
We've got some pretty big requirements here. 90 smithing, 86 herb lore, 85 crafting, 85 fire making, 80 cooking, 76 fishing, 79 farming. Um, you also need to annoyingly complete barbarian assault in all five rolls, so level five in all five rolls. This can be tough and it can take a long time. Either you're paying a ton for one of those boosting clans to get you through this, or you're gonna have to do what I did and deal with a whole bunch of idiots ruining all your runs and then just leaving halfway through because they've got enough for their Fido torso and they don't care about you. The rewards here are not great. I did I grinded this out so I could get the unlimited teleports to Sherlock because I thought that was really gonna help with master clues. And it is a nice quality of life, but I don't know if it's worth the pain of dealing with barbarian assault. Uh, the auto god bless being able to turn a zami spear into a zami hasta is good exclusively for iron men but for iron men you're realistically only doing that once maybe twice so the cost isn't going to matter too much uh the flax keeper doing stuff doesn't matter the increased chance of a harvest life at the catherby herb patch doesn't really do too much basically you're doing a lot of grinding stats and dealing with really really annoying people to get slightly better sherlock teleports um if that matters to you, I can put it in C tier. Otherwise, realistically, it's probably somewhere in D tier. Haramja Elite Diary. This might be one of the biggest step ups in Elite Diary from Hard Diary requirements out of all of them. You go from 44 runecrafting to 91 runecrafting. You also need 87 herb lore, 72 farming, and a fire cape. Still no quest requirements, so that's good. Um, but the rewards here are good. They are good, but 91 runecrafting is a lot of runecrafting. Runecrafting training has got a lot better with things like Guardians of the Rift, Blood Runes, and Soul Runes, but that's still a lot. Um, you get unlimited teleports straight to Duradel for all your tasks, which is good. You get a bigger chance of agility arena tickets, which again, I don't know who does agility at the Broomhaven agility arena. Like, surely you would, if you're going to put in that much effort, you would just go to the Hallowed Sepulchre. Um, you get free cart rides, more or less relevant, free access to the Hardwood Grove irrelevant unless you're an iron man maybe uh access to stepping stone shortcuts and the broomhaven agility dungeon which requires 83 agility no one's using that uh red dragons drop noted stuff who on earth is doing that <laughs> all metal dragons in the broomhaven drop their respective bars in noted form um you're maybe doing this if you get a steel or iron dragon task and you run out of points but just just go do some point posting don't don't do that task uh, and you also get a free resurrection per day at the fight caves, not in the Inferno. Um, it's not too bad. Um, I think there's plenty of us who have even had experience with fight, fire capes. I think some of us can just forget that we're on a mage wave, turn off prayer, and then just tank a massive hit without realizing it. Um, or just getting playing quite risky because we're trying to get through the caves faster and then accidentally get ourselves clanged. Um, so that's pretty pretty good um, as, a, as a reward. Basically, for the most people, you're just getting a slight quality of life, slightly closer to teleport to Duradil, which I don't know if it's worth 91 runecrafting. Um, yeah, I'll I'll put it I'll put it in I'll put it in D tier. Let's be realistic, 91 runecrafting is a lot. That's that's a brutal grind to go through through a slightly closer teleport to Duradil for Slayer tasks. Core end and Kebos diary. The requirements here are big. 82 fishing, 84 cooking, 90 woodcutting, 95 slayer, 85 farming, 77 runecrafting. It's a lot, but the rewards are massive. Unlimited teleport scrum is great. An additional prayer bonus making this the best in a slot with plus two prayer bonus for a blessing. Um, you get 20 slayer points for completing tasks from Kona are from 18. This is awesome. Reduced burn chance of the city kitchens. You probably don't have too much cooking left to grind because of the stat requirements just to unlock this. Um, but the protection burn in the Karom Slayer dungeon without boots of stone or boots of brimstone is huge. And 10% increased blood runes from blood rune crafting. Also a really nice touch. You don't get the extra XP, but a bit of extra profit doesn't hurt. Stat requirements are big. Rewards, amazing. Again, Kuran Diary doing well in the top tiers this is definitely an s tier lumbridge elite this one has big style requirements but not the worst of all of them uh 88 smithing 78 thieving and 76 runecrafting and 75 woodcutting runecrafting's definitely got a lot better so this 76 is not as bad as it used to be uh it, this is this is good uh the rewards are you get 100% run replenished three times a day. They thought that 100% four times a day would be too strong. So instead of getting 100% four times a day, we get 100% three times a day. 
you get 30 casts of high alchemy per day. This is technically profit and this is technically going to be good. I don't think it's worth your time. By the time that you've got the stat requirements to do this, you definitely have better money makers that are better worth your time than doing this. But the 30 high alchemy costs can actually come in useful. At places like Dagonoth Kings, where you'd rather be on Ancients and being able to use Blood Barrage to heal, uh, being able to alk down there is really good and you can pretty much use it almost exactly 30 costs during a trip um, for a full DK's task. Um, so I definitely recommend it for that. 20% discount on items in the Color Romancer's chest. This is a nice little quality of life, but realistically not going to matter too much uh, unless you're buying 200 pairs of barrage gloves. The ability to use fairy rings without the need of a Draymond or Luna Staff. This one's a really nice quality of life. The number of times that you forget to bring a Draymond Staff or it takes up that extra inventory space for things like Zola Trips, it's really good. Uh, it can't, obviously, star requirements are a lot to get it, um, but honestly, the star coins for this diary are far from the worst of the elite diaries, and you get a six slot for blocking slayer tasks, which is also a really good change. So because of that, this is the first time. So we have two of the rings in D tier, one in C tier, and I, I'm, I'm gonna put this up at the top of A tier. This is really good. Do I put it S tier? Is it S tier? Ooh. Let's just say it's bordering. It's bordering on S and A. Like if quality of life like this and the extra slot, the extra block slot matters a lot to you, then you could probably consider it S tier. I think I personally value the increased variety of rewards from the current one, plus the fact that it's also best in slot. Um, reality is this is probably other people. Um, the extra prayer bonus, the extra slayer points, the protection in the uh, Kurum Slayer dungeon so you can use best of slot boots, like all, all of these and the, and the blood runes, all of these combine are a lot of different benefits in a lot of different areas. Um, whereas the Lumbridge Diary just saves you an inventory spot and a handful of places and gives you the extra block slot, which is really good, but I don't think it's S tier good. Mauritania Elite Diary. This has some pretty gnarly requirements. 96 fishing, 84 crafting, 80 fire making, and 85 Slayer being the biggest ones. Um, th th this is tough. Um, and unfortunately, the rewards do not come close to stacking up. Unlimited teleports beneath the slime pit, doesn't matter. The buckets of slime and bone meal, again, doesn't matter unless you're hardcore Iron Man. The fire making bonus from Burning Shades is okay if you use that. The bones buried granting full prayer XP is effectively redundant like i was talking about before the calculation that basically from i think it's like something like 80 to 99 slayer will maybe give you a couple hundred k prayer xp that was based on the full power bone crusher not the 50 percent reduced bone crusher so that's this bone crusher is maybe giving you a couple hundred k prayer xp which is like less than an hour of normal dragon bones at the wilderness altar it's it's a lot of stats to grind for barely any increase uh wouldn't recommend it uh, you get access to the Herb Patch on Harmony Island. I'm not a fan of doing Herb Runs particularly, so this is irrelevant for me. If you love doing Herb Runs, you might like it. And the 10% Slayer experience gain on the Slayer task in the Slayer Tower. If you're doing Gargoyles or the Gargoyle Bus, this is a reasonable increase. Uh, but overall, not something I personally think is that great. Uh, so because of that, it's, it's going into D tier. The question is where in D tier? Is it more or less useful? No, it's less useful than that. It's less useful than that. It's less useful. Is it more useful than the other Mauritania legs? No, because this one gives you the Barrow's bonus, right? Oh no, the Barrow's bonus was the other one. It was tier three. Uh, is it? It's probably slightly better. That's probably about where it's at. It's it's middle of D tier. I I don't think it's very good. Okay, moving on to Elite Diary Varrock. 90 Herb Lore, which is good if you want to get the COX requirement. Uh, 89 Smithing, 95 Cooking. It is a faster 99, but 95 Cooking is still going to take a while. 81 Fletching, very slow if you're doing it through normal training methods. 78 Room Crafting. Uh, the unfortunate reality of this diary is it has a lot of slow, sort of high requirement skills for a number of different things. So it's going to take a while to unlock all of these. You do get the Zaf Battle Staff going up to 120 Battle Staffs a day, which is looking at like 120k free gold per day if you feel like doing that. So that is really good. Um, but that's kind of the only thing on the Varrock Tier 4 that is actually any good. Um, and that's obviously not worth the insane amount of grinding. So like if you're moving towards maxing and you want to do these stats and this is something you want to go for, it is a nice little benefit to be able to get an extra bit of gold, 
um, but nothing, nothing that crazy. It's not giving you prayer in the inferno. It's not giving you access to the best in slot, uh, cow fight queen money maker. Um, it's 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 going into D tier, unfortunately, which is crazy because I love the Varok the Varok tier two. Like it's up in S tier. I think it's one of the best diary rewards, but the Varok tier four is just just doesn't live up to it. Okay, Western Province Elite Diary. We've got 85 Agility, which is big. 85 Thieving, which is big. 85 Slayer. Oh, sorry. 85 Fletching, which is, again, either Carpal Tunnel or Slow. And 93 Slayer. But far and away, the most annoying requirement of this diary is 1,000 Chompy Bird Kills. It'll take a while. It's pointless. It doesn't do anything. It gives you the chance of the Chompy Pet, uh, which is good. It's a free pet, so that is nice. Um, you get Slayer Point rewards increase from Neve and Steve to match those of Duradel, which is good for doing the Slayer that you like if Neve or Steve have better Slayer tasks for later on when you're doing really big Slayer grinds, that's nice. 150 Ogre Eyes from Rands, no one will ever do that. One free Resurrection per day when fighting Zora. This one is actually useful. I think it's like, uh, don't get me wrong. I know everyone's going to seem crazy. Like, what do you mean? It's not useful. It's free resurrection of Zora. Um, if you're doing Zora nowadays, it's not amazing GP per hour as I cover in the previous video, but it is obviously the best in slot reward for hardcore Iron Man. If you're hardcore Iron Man, this is like number one S tier because Zora has like crazy good rewards and being safe death is amazing. Um, as a main, if you have like a Tebow or a Bofer and you're doing like solo grinding Zora. Um, it is pretty good because you can pretty much just go, yeah, I'm just going to do Zora until I die today and I'll, I won't worry about it. I can kind of chill and then I'll occasionally die and mess up and then I can just go and do something else. However, this reward, it's not like a best in slot method. I will definitely like, okay, let's be real. It's, it's definitely above C tier for sure. It's, it's more useful than these things in here. I don't know if it's A tier though. That's the thing, like, because you're, you're thinking, like, Zora Res, huge, it should be, like, way up here. Um, I just find, especially, like, maybe this is just a me thing, but when I have the Resurrection available, I just use Zora way more recklessly and then end up using my Resurrection way more quickly. I'm like, oh, I've only got one piece of food left, I can do another kill, and then inevitably end up running out of supplies and just using the Resurrection to get finish off that kill. Um, it is good though, isn't it? Let's be real. Yeah, okay. We'll put it in A tier. We'll put it in A tier. Right next to the Fallout 3 shield. Okay, moving on to the final Elite Diary. The Elite Wilderness Diary. And holy god, what are these requirements? This is disgusting. 85 mining, 90 smithing, 85 fishing, 90 cooking, 75 fire making, 75 wood cutting, 84 thieving, 96 mage, 83 Slayer and 60 Agility, and you need to defeat Callisto, Veteranatus, and Vedion. Who came up with this? This is insane! This is like the what? This is like a ridiculous amount of diary rewards. And honestly, the rewards are not great. Um, free entry to the the resource arena, which is nice for escaping PKs occasionally. Uh, noted dragon burn drops in the wilderness. This used to be good for Iron Man. I don't even know if Iron Man, late game Iron Man, use this to get 99 prayer anymore. I'm pretty sure they do the, it's like a one-to-one -one prayer to Slayer XP training method that uses the new Arceus uh, sacrifice spell on the Arceus prayer book, uh, the Arceus spell book. Um, so I don't even think they would use this anymore. You get increased dark crab catch rate, which again is like, who's fishing dark crabs that isn't a bot, really? Basically, the only good thing on here is the unlimited free teleports to the Fountain of Rune, which is a decent money-making method for trying to make the Amulet of Eternal Glory. Um, but that's basically the only reward, um, and you can definitely do better money-makers. Like, by the time you grind all these stats on here, you could have max combat, at which point you could do things like Nex. Or way better money-makers than that. So, it, again, if you're moving towards maxing, this is useful, but in terms of the rewards behind some of the most insane stat requirements for any of the diaries, th this is terrible. This is such insane requirements to get very very little um and because of that it, it's going bottom of d tier okay and there it is there's our our tier list um as it is completed um 
if you have a different tier list, I'm interested to hear about it. If you think that I undervalued or overvalued some rewards, let me know. Um, as you can see from my perspective, a lot of the diary rewards are kind of crap. Like everything in D tier is basically not worth going for and things in C tier are very niche, only a sort of worth going for. I think B tier and above is definitely where you go like, oh yeah, I definitely want this reward. But you can see kind of just in quantity how few of the rewards are like worth grinding, if that makes sense, at least in my opinion. I'd be very interested to hear your opinions because I'm sure they're different from mine and I'd love to hear why. Here are our three bond winners being rolled. Please reply on the video and make sure to provide your RSN and then you can add me in game and I will give you your bond. You have one week before I will re-roll the winners.